the brand new series of Adventure Bike TV is made and ready to go. And here is episode one. But where should you go to watch the other episodes? Well, it's still on Amazon, but due to Amazon Prime changes, sadly it's now 99p per episode. However, we wouldn't want to let you down and we want as many people to be able to watch the show as possible. So the full series is available free worldwide on the Dunlop website. You can see a link in the description below, which will take you directly to the rest of the series on our production partners website. It's free. You don't have to register or anything like that. Just watch it and enjoy. And welcome to the brand new season of Adventure Bike TV from our brand new studio. And we're back after a year off due to COVID. Yes, and it's worth telling you now that everything you're going to see during this season of Adventure Bike TV was filmed in line with the recommended precautions in place at the time of filming. Right now, with that out of the way, let us show you a little teaser of what's coming up in this season. Let me tell you a little story. Wow, that goes from not to mental in half a second. Triumph have got a tiger out in the wild. Guess what? You're bored. No one cares! No one cares! Don't feel afraid to go on little adventures on boats and bicycles when you're on your motorbike. This is why Honda hates you! <laughs> it's a phenomenal bike. Maybe one of the best adventure bikes I've ridden but he's quite simply my hero. In this weather, I don't care what I'm riding because it's sunny and I'm on a bike. To them, I say, F you. an awesome time making this series haven't we guys yeah, yeah i am sure you'll have as much fun watching it as we had making it well to be honest with you we were riding the bike so let's be honest we probably had more fun than you guys that's not really selling it sam no. not even a little bit no, no, probably not. <laughs> anyway it is time to get on with the show and to kick off triumph has a brand new kid on the block or maybe it's the kid's new younger brother anyway roll vt I really, really liked the old Triumph 800, but it was never a bike that wowed me. Having said that, I rode one almost 5,000 miles in two weeks to Norcap and back, and it was very competent, but maybe that's damning it with faint praise. However, what on earth do I know? 85,000 people bought one of those bikes from Triumph. It had major updates in 2014 and 2018, but this bike, is brand new from the ground up. The question is, will it wow me? The design brief for the new bike meant it needed to be more agile, but more stable too. More powerful, but lighter. Better on and off-road, more comfortable, with longer range, reduced servicing costs, better equipment, and a wider range of accessories. Now that is quite a wish list. So exactly what changes have Triumph made to the 900? The tank and the seat are slightly narrower. 
the handlebars are slightly further back and very importantly the radiator is now split so the engine can be slightly lower and slightly further forward which lowers the center of gravity and it's also got an electronically adjustable rear shock so there's quite a raft of changes there What does the pro version of this bike give you for an extra 1700 quid over the 11,400 starting price of the GT? Well, in addition to the ABS, traction control, cruise, heated grips, TFT screen, and four riding modes, you'll get my Triumph connectivity, center stand, fog lights, quick shifter, heated seats, TPS, and five riding modes. Worth the extra? Well, I'd certainly want them all. Here's a few other details. The GT Pro tips the scales at 198 kilos, whilst that is 10 kilos more than the positively skinny KTM 890 Adventure R, it is 13 kilos less than the BMW 850 GS and a whopping 28 kilos lighter than the Africa Twin. And even more scarily, it's 40 kilos less than the DCT version of the Africa Twin. In terms of power comparisons, both the Tiger and the Africa Twin are on 94 horsepower, the KTM a shade under 92, and the 850 GS, it's 90. So, not too much difference there. Although, the delivery of the power is unsurprisingly very different across the four. So the Tiger more than holds its own in terms of power and weight, unless of course you went for a Ducati Multistrada 950 with 113 horsepower, that's 20 horsepower more. But the weight is similar at just over 200 kilos. If I had to pick one other bike that the Tiger feels most similar to ride, it would be the Ducati. And that's a compliment I never thought I'd pay it. So the question I set myself earlier was, does this bike wow me? But I'm gonna answer that by actually answering a slightly different question first which is, would I take this bike on a tour, on a grand tour, if you will, and have myself a whale of a time and enjoy riding it for every second of the trip? Yes, absolutely, I would. And I genuinely believe in my heart now, I understand far better those people who say that you get the best of a twin and an inline four in this triple. But there's still just a little niggle at the back of my head that says by getting the best of both, do you miss out on something of each. So it's really close to wowing me. Really, really close. I do have one other question though, which is looking back at this trail behind me, would I take this bike on it? And the answer is no. But if I put some knobbly tires on it, then maybe I would. But those clever people at Triumph are two steps ahead of me. If you were to think of this tiger as the tiger that's in the zoo, Triumph have got a tiger out in the wild. Now, at its heart, of course this bike is pretty much the same as the GT Pro. It's just got the split radiators, the smaller sump, which allows the crankshaft to be lower and slightly further forward, all of which lowers the centre of gravity. But you know where Triumph have really, really nailed it with this bike? Despite all that incredible mechanical engineering and the fabulous electronics package, it's that white frame. My God, it looks fabulous.
I want to talk just a bit more about the engine, because there is a very good reason why this new 900 feels so different to the old bike. And bear with me, because it's going to get just a little bit technical. For the first time, the triple doesn't feature a 120 degree crank layout. Why is that important, you may ask? And the answer is because it means that the evenly spaced firing intervals that used to go with it are no longer there. The firing order is now managed so that cylinders 1 and 3 fire close together, then there's a gap to the middle. And why you ask again is that important? Because it makes it feel more like a characterful twin. Theoretically, it also means that off-road traction should be better, courtesy of the longer gaps which gives the tyre more time to find that ever-elusive grip. Right, so we've been out riding for a good couple of hours now and a real mixture of fire trails, some water crossings and some narrow single track, really quite technical stuff. And I've got to say I'm rather blown away by this bike. I mean, I've already mentioned the differences in the setup and the engineering, so that makes the centre of gravity much lower and you can really, really feel the difference. Particularly when I was riding in the single track and the narrow stuff and when it's all technical, I could move it around really, really quickly. The other big difference for me was in the rider modes. So the off-road and off-road pro mode can really tell the difference. Off-road, you've still got some traction control coming in. So not that I can swing the corner with my back end going out, but if you want to be doing that, you've got to be in the pro mode. I just found that my ability to control the 94 horsepower and 201 kilos was worlds apart from the old models. And it left an all day grin on my somewhat worn out looking face. Technical detail and day grins aside, what do you get for your extra 1400 quid over the 12 grand starting price? Center stand, engine bars, sump guard, plus six riding modes. And like the GT Pro, you'll get a quick shifter, TPS, Triumph connectivity, fog lights, and the heated seats. I've had an absolutely stunning day messing around on the trails and in the mud, all courtesy of the Triumph Adventure Experience. And this bike's really taken me by surprise. And there's two main reasons for that. I finally, finally get that triple engine. All the changes are made to it, I understand them and it works for me on a really kind of in my heart kind of level. And the other one is all the mechanical and engineering changes that have altered the center of gravity. It makes it an absolute joy to ride off-road. Now you may be asking, would I have one of these in my garage? But it's not quite the right question. The question should be, would I have one of these or a GT Pro? Well, I think the answer is blindingly obvious. It's got a white frame. So, Seriously, the white frame is the reason you would buy this bike. The white frame makes it look sexy. But even if it had a black frame, I would still go for that bike. And as an overall package, the Tiger has finally become the bike that I always wanted it to be, and I can't tell you just how happy that makes me. Now, on to Tales from the Trails, and as always, we were off on a great little adventure. And this time, I planned the whole thing, from the route and accommodation to the bikes we would be riding. Yes, and as you can tell from my face, once again, like last time with the Honda C90, I got royally stitched up. Hello, so we are here at the start of our Tales from the Trails adventure. All prepared, as you can see, ready for action, ready for anything, I think. Yeah. Can't wait. I mean, we have to be ready for anything because we literally have no idea what's happening. Graham has arranged all of this. We've just been told to meet here with our kit, ready for five nights away yeah and it's a bit random yeah we don't know what bikes we're using we're not quite sure how he's going to get three bikes here we're assuming they're all being dropped off in a van or something and i yeah we just don't know this is the worst introduction ever because we literally <laughs> can't tell you anything yeah. other than we're going away for five days and we're currently just south of bristol 
at the start of well a, a part of the Tet so that's it really now we're just waiting for Graham to turn up well I'm just hoping the boys have arrived on time I haven't heard anything from them and they should be just around the corner well he, he said he said 10 but it's half 10 now so God knows where he is I just hope what do you think he's going to get? What do you... I'm, I'm hoping it'll be little kind of bikes, like 500 cc's. I maybe. reckon it'll be something like, you know, the Honda, um, oh, the new the... 300, CRF 300s? Like do you that. know what would be cool? Is the adventure scooters. Yes! <laughs> like the Honda adventure three, scooters. Three adventure scooters. That would be awesome. But, God. What was that bike that just went past? That was no, nice. I want one of those. I don't think it's going to be one of those. I don't know, it could be, it could be old retro style. I mean, they're in there, Yeah, aren't but they? we had the Herald last time, so it'll be like, it won't be that. Yeah, you had the Herald. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had the C90. I suppose that is still retro, and then C90 Graham let the team... C90 is the, the definition of retro. <laughs> and then Graham let the team down with his Sinus, but, you know. Oh, that was a good bike, then. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty good. But, what is that? Know. I can hear something. I, I hear, but... what? Oh, what the actual... <laughs> So, so where are the, where's the other two bikes? <laughs> Seriously. We don't need two bikes. No, no, no. We really actually no, do need look, two bikes, two more bikes. We don't need it. We've got three seats. Shotgun, 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 shotgun. From what I see, there's only two seats and what looks like to be some medieval torture. <laughs> well. Oh my God, there's no seat. It's not a seat at the moment. But we're going to get that sorted out. We're going to get a bit of padding for you. Or so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be walking behind you for the first, until we get that sorted. Is it? <laughs> no, you'll just be. Well, we'll just go try it out for a bit, and then. Are we now? Yeah. Is 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 that what is that what's going yeah. to happen? We can put well, we could put a sleeping bag on it or something. We, we'll be fine until it's only an hour away the place we're going to get it fixed so I just didn't have time to get it sorted out on the way here. It started to dawn on me quite quickly that Sam was really very genuinely not happy. <laughs> oh my god are we do, what kind of are we doing off-road? Well, we not be doing any off-road. A little bit. What do you mean a little bit? It's all going to be a surprise. Oh no that's the surprise. There should be no more surprises other than that. And even then, that is not, yeah. I seriously, no. seriously, are there other bikes? No. But There's genuinely not other bikes? No. It just seemed to fit so perfectly because we've all had to be apart for so long. Don't, don't pull we're this all, shit. We're no, all, no, no, we're don't, all in. don't start with all we've this. We've all been tested, so we're in our little Adventure Bike TV bubble, and this is our bubble. I mean, it just, it just seemed to fit so perfectly. Did you forget about this trip or something and then <laughs> rush to get a bike? Let's <laughs> go. Well, my ass is already saying no. 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 Let's just, let's just have a little spin up the road. Let's see how we go. Go on, we, we can leave all the kit by the side here and we'll just have a little spin up here, a little bit of tet, and we'll just see how we go. A little tester. Hold on. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you sure this is going to work? I'm oh, making that look so much of hard work. <laughs> it's f***ing snug. That's <laughs> all right, though. That looks like it's perfectly made for you. You're just going to have such a relaxing time. <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep. I'd go, oh. Tom did see the funny side. <laughs> But Sam didn't. It's only for like an hour. No, an hour. No, said? it's it's not even an hour. When when this gets well, padding, I I say it's for an hour. Assuming they've got the bit. <laughs> they they promised me they'd have everything ready. After another half hour of talking Sam around, we all jumped on the bike for a quick test ride. Some very basic off road, nothing that a car couldn't handle. But Sam had really had enough. <laughs> Get great, great, no, 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 hey, that's not right, no, no, that's it, no, I'm sorry guys, but, you know, fun's fun, but this is just, 
thank you. Uh, <laughs> we've only just. It's not that bad, Sam. No, 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 no. Has he just. just he's turned off the intercom. He's properly gone. Is he really angry? I've never seen him like that. Is he really pissed? I think he is. I think he's properly pissed off. Okay. Let me go and turn around and then we'll. Uh, We'll go back and find him. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be back there. He'll be back there. Okay. Where's he gonna go? That's, I don't know, but. <laughs> I mean, seriously, are there other options, or is this it? No, this is it. This is it. This is it. We genuinely did not know what to do. Sam had gone, and we had no idea where, so we just waited, and waited. Right, he's been gone 40 minutes, no, 45 yeah. minutes now. And he's not answering his phone. So, I reckon he's just walked through his bus stop or got a taxi or something. Do you reckon he's really just gone? He really wasn't very happy at all, was he? No. So, I reckon he's gone and when he's recovered himself, he'll give us a call. I don't, I don't feel terribly comfortable just driving off without him, though. <laughs> He's a big boy. He'll be able to look after himself. Yeah, okay. Go on, let's finish our pack and get going. Do you want some more beef jerky? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you just sit here in the sunshine and do nothing. I <laughs> know, it's quite tempting, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, Sam's walked off. What are we going to do? Thank you. Let me try and phone him one more time. He's not picking up, is he? No. Is he that pissed off with us? I think so. I don't know. Well, I say pissed off with us. Pissed off with you. It's your idea. <laughs> I didn't know you were bringing this thing. I think it was quite cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. In fairness, I would have probably been a bit pissed if I'd had to sit on that thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go. We set off without Sam, just Tom and me. No idea if we'd ever see him again. We didn't think he'd died or anything, but there was the strong possibility that he wouldn't be around for the rest of the week. I was slowly getting used to the outfit with a small, <clears throat> small amount of extra weight in the sidecar. And Tom quickly started finding ways to annoy me. <laughs> I had to put a quick end to Tom's exceptionally irritating behaviour, so I decided to tell him about John and Wendy, who had lent me the sidecar outfit. There's actually a lovely story behind the outfit. Um, it's kind of sad, but it's about it's a love story basically. But it, it, so, so, that it sort of starts with a slightly sad bit, which was John's wife uh, was very unwell, and they'd always loved going and riding together. But her illness meant that she couldn't sit and hold herself up safely on the back of the bike. And they'd always had a dream of going and uh, doing a long kind of. Uh, ride and adventure around South America. So that's why he got the sidecar outfit built, because it meant they could go off and do their bike adventure, uh, but his wife was able to sit safely and in comfort in the sidecar. Oh, is that why they've got the seatbelts? So that's why they got the seatbelts, because his wife was struggling to um, hold herself upright. So not only is she you know, comfortable and safe, but it holds her in the seat. Uh, and they did it. They went and spent six months around South Africa and had just the most astonishing time by all accounts. So this bike so, means quite a lot to them. And absolutely. If John said to me, Graham, look after this, you know how much it means to me once. He must have said it half a dozen times, and quite rightly so, because it means a huge amount to them. You know, it it, uh, it says a lot about him, um, without trying to get all over emotional about it, the love 
they have for each other and, and what they mean to each other is kind of, this is a symbol of it, if you will. It's, quite, it's really sweet, isn't it? Really yeah, sweet. yeah. It's, I, I think it's a wonderful story about the bike, about the outfit. Um, despite my sometimes personal misgivings that ride it. But every time I, I think about that, I don't think about that story in it. Put a, put a happy smile on my face. Yeah, and I think that, you know, if, if anyone's got the exact right situation to need a sidecar, that, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, this, yeah. Uh, it just proves that there is there is definitely a place for this. this 100%. 100%. Yeah. After a few hours of riding, Tom got a text message. Tom got a text message from Sam a few minutes ago saying that he has partially forgiven us, or me, I think, and that he is going to be meeting us here very shortly. Graham, uh, so what, what bike, well, I'm assuming he's got himself a bike. I've got no idea what he's got. Do you think he's just turned up in his car? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. He was, he was probably annoyed. <laughs> he's like, I will follow you in the car for the rest of this journey. <laughs> I'm going to bring it on my... I'm, Really posh electric vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it'll be quiet. Like a Tesla. Yeah, and fast. It's very it's very low. Is the suspension lowered to, to do this or I would have I would suspect the suspension has been lowered because John is a lowered person. John is a John is a lowered person. Yes. That's your that's your way of saying he's a bit short. Is that a polite way of saying it? What's the PC way of saying You're someone short. is not very tall? Well, they're short. John is short. A lowered yeah. person. I don't think a, a lowered, lowered person. <laughs> that sounds so, like he's sounds, had his make, legs chopped yeah, off. It makes it sound like we deliberately made <laughs> less tall. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Can I hear a bike? No. So, no, I, I, I must ask him actually, but I'm pretty sure that looks lowered. It feels it lowered. lowered. It feels lowered. Hark! The sound of a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, he hasn't. Hey, just, he hasn't... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you happy now? Where'd you get that from? So, what is this TV show called? Adventure Bike TV. Here is an adventure bike. Have you been practicing that speech as you drove up here? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I actually gave Claire a ring because, my dear and wonderful wife, we have these from Honda Long Term Loan. And she came and dropped one off for me. Da, 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 da. How's so, she yeah. Home? Huh? I don't care. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I got an adventure bike. There we go. Now it's an adventure. There we go. Are you... I poked up a bit. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> so, genuinely, how pissed off were you? Uh, I was so pissed off, I went home, well, I rang my wife to get her to bring me this bike. That's how pissed off I was. Oh, oh yes. You've got knobbly tyres on the back. Well, we're going off-road, aren't we? I don't know. Wow. Oh, we made such a success of going off-road last time. <laughs> well, exactly, there we go. When Job you, done. Where are you going to put those on? I don't know. We'll find a spot. It'll be fine. We'll find somewhere to do it. You know. So you, you're, you're, you're joining us now, are you not going off in a huff? Uh, well, it all depends, really. It all depends how the rest of the trip goes. Is, it, is this just how, like, Adventure Bike TV is going to go from now on? Every time you don't like something, you'll just leave. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> With Sam finally having joined us, we headed to our first overnight stop through some of the stunning North Devon roads until we got to Dorothy's Speed Shop.
I cannot believe Sam had such a hissy fit about that. He really, really wasn't happy. And I also can't believe he managed to get the other bike quite so quickly. I reckon he had that on standby just in case. Well, you can watch more of our adventures next episode, but now it's time for something a little bit different. There are so many people in the adventure motorcycling world that are inspiring, but most people have a specific story about one person that has inspired them personally more than others. So we sat down and thought about the people that inspired us and why, and in each episode of this series, we're gonna tell you about who inspires us the most and why. And first to go is Tom. To be honest, um, I never really wanted to ride motorcycles. Uh, my parents were really against it as a friend of theirs had quite a big motorcycle crash and ended up with quite serious brain damage. So for the longest time, motorcycles were never really on my radar. Uh, I saw them, thought they looked very cool, but never really felt the need to ride one. Um, when I was 17, I went the back of a Kawasaki Ninja uh, that belonged to my girlfriend's father and honestly hated it. Um, I was just terrified. Uh, it's a wonder I ever got onto a motorcycle at all. Um, <laughs> when I did though, it was uh, through necessity. Uh, I was living in Bedfordshire, commuting every day all the way to Windsor. Uh, being able to filter on a bike saved me at least a good hour on my on my journey so I got a bike uh, I did my test yes in that order uh, and then I was hooked uh, traveling via motorcycle though again never really entered my brain until yes you saw it coming I watched race to Dakar ha, I know you thought I was gonna say long way around but actually being a little bit competitive and loving the kind of racing aspect of things, I actually watched Race to Dakar first and I loved it. Apart from the theme song, which I told Charlie in conversation once that I didn't like, uh, only to find out it was written by uh, a close friend of his. So that was um, awkward. <laughs> uh, then after seeing this, I went on to watch Long Way Down. Yep, I got them completely in the wrong order. Um, so Long Way Down, then Long Way Up. Um, no, long way round. Um, but it did spark my interest in travelling on motorcycles, uh, as I'm sure it did for many, many people. Uh, but the truly life-changing inspiration I had uh, was from a very short and sweet conversation with a Mr. Sam Manicum. Uh, and that's who I want to talk to you about today. Uh, how one man inspired me to follow a dream. So, yeah. What is it about Sam Manicum that's so great? Well, if you ask pretty much anyone, they will refer to him as the nicest man in adventure motorcycling, a title which I know makes him cringe inwardly, and I know he would probably rather that I didn't say that about him right now, uh, but he is, and not to mention it would be just bad storytelling on my part. Um, Sam is, of course, an extremely accomplished author, he has four amazing travel books under his belt uh, and many, 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 many articles. And even if you uh, never meet Sam in person, just reading these is enough to be completely inspired. Um, the thing I love is the tone of his books are also really, really positive. Uh, even when things go really bad and they go really, really bad. <laughs> He approaches every kind of situation with a glass half full mentality, something something I wish I was better at doing and I had the strength of character to do myself. So there is so much else I could say about Sam in terms of his travels, uh, his life and for instance, why he's such an advocate for organ donation. But I just can't do it justice, if I'm honest. Um, you just need to read his books or listen to the audio books um, I personally prefer listening to the audiobooks. I think there's nothing quite like hearing the book uh, in the voice of the author themselves. So, yeah. But all these things are great uh, and a way inspires many, many people. But how did he inspire me directly? Well, I did a trip uh, down through Africa to make a film called Scooters in the Sahara. Uh, at the time, it was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I was never going to do anything else like it again. I didn't ever plan to do any other motorcycle adventure trips. 
uh, it was a complete one-off and I just planned to go back to the day job. Uh, I was managing a outdoor shop at the time um, and then maybe doing some corporate kind of filming on the side like I'd done for quite a while. Um, but then not long after the DVD was released for Scooters and Horror, I was at the Touratech travel event um, in Wales and Sam, who I knew but assumed wouldn't have a clue who I was, uh, came up to me and said, ah, Tom, I'm not going to do his voice. Um, I was hoping, I was hoping to run into you. Uh, I wanted to say how much I enjoyed your film. And I was just completely gobsmacked. Um, and he continued to say how he hoped I'd continue doing travel films and he couldn't wait to see what I was going to do next. And this was really a massive, massive turning point for me. I remember going home afterwards and speaking to my wife and I was really excited that I'd met Sam and not only did he like my work, but he was exactly the kind of person I wanted him to be. And in many ways, it's true what they say when they say you should never meet your heroes. Um, I've now pretty much met all of my motorcycling heroes and when you put people on a pedestal, uh, it's, it's always going to be really, really hard for people to live up to those expectations. I remember meeting, yeah, I remember meeting one person for the first time. I won't name them, but I loved their films. I was introduced as a fellow filmmaker, um, and I was then immediately asked uh, if I liked their films, to which I replied, yes, I like them very much. And the next question from him was, what do you film on? Uh, and I said, I film on a Sony Alpha 77, uh, a camera at the time which was pretty good, and I borrowed money to go and buy, um, and I was really proud of it. And he simply replied, I don't know what that is, uh, turned and walked away. And I must admit, after that, I felt awful, partly because I'd so looked forward to meeting him, and he didn't seem to be interested in at all to meet a fan uh, who wasn't about to buy a book. Uh, but also because I've always believed that it's, it's the storytelling that's important, uh, not the equipment you film on. And, you know, he concentrated on that so much, it, it was quite off-putting. And I was always pleased to see, for example, that Austin Vince fully embodied, uh, when I met him, the fact that storytelling is key, not the equipment. Since then, I've met this person uh, a few more times, and they have been fine towards me. Uh, but as they say, first impressions last. Um, some of the best first impressions I've had um, within the adventure motorcycle world are Charlie Boardman, Austin Vince, Graham Field was fantastic, Simon Pavey, he was uh, an absolute legend, but not one of them holds a candle to Sam Manicum. My first meeting with him without a doubt changed the course of my life. Um, I started looking at filming and motorcycles together. Uh, it pushed me to insist on getting introduced to Graham Hoskins uh, when I found out he was looking for a cameraman for his TV series uh, that he was doing with Danny John Jules. And finally leading me to the idea of Adventure Bike TV. Um, there's a reason Sam, yeah, there's a reason Sam was our first Under the Visor interview on Adventure Bike TV. Um, he was without doubt the first person I was going to go to and he was so happy to do it as well and I'm proud to say that me and Sam are now pretty close friends uh, he continues to be incredibly supportive of me and the show um, and always at the end of the telephone if I have need to chat which is just great the thing is that I'm not the only one who thinks Sam is a legend um, in fact to emphasize this point I had to fight with Claire uh, as she desperately wanted to talk about Sam but being the producer, I won. Um, she too, though, has stories of meeting Sam uh, before she went off on her own uh, round the world trip with Sam, her husband. Um, and I remember Sam talking to Lisa and Jason before they went off on their big uh, round the world trip. And I'm sure there are so many other people who have had the same experience with Sam and have these stories just like I do and Claire does. And, Everyone does. So yeah, without a doubt, to me, the most inspirational person in the venture market is my friend, Sam Manicum. 
and if you haven't already go buy his books uh, listen to his audiobooks and check him out on Adventure Rider Radio. Adventure Rider Radio. Um, you need this man in your life. He's he's a good man. I have to say, I really did want to do Sam Mannequin. Uh, that, that does sound a bit weird, so excuse that. But you know what I mean. He's an incredibly inspiring person, and I don't think I've ever seen him not smiling. Anyway, time for more adventure with everything that's been happening around the world in 2020 and now into 2021, people have had to massively restrict their travel. And that got us thinking, what kind of adventure could you have in the UK? And what if you only had a weekend to do it? So we all picked a bike and a location and some awesome and very different 24 hour adventures. And here's mine. Welcome to my 24 hour adventure where I've brought you to the slightly windy Cotswolds today, specifically Cotswold Airport. Now originally we were going to take you into their wonderful little aviate cafe where they've got loads of awesome trinkets, you can sit there, have a cup of tea, watch the planes land, the helicopters take off, see the decommissioned 747s and sadly because of Covid it's currently closed. So instead I'm here on the outside <laughs> but this is going to be our starting point for our adventure. Now, why the Cotswolds? Well, for starters, it's an awesome little place, but I'm a massive foodie. And up here, they've got some really great fresh produce. Also with the Cotswolds, it's got some really great green laning. I'm not gonna talk any more about it. I'd rather show you the wonderful place itself. Let's go riding. things that I love doing when going on adventures is trying to find little unique places to come and find and just take a brief look at and we were looking around and there's just tons and tons of airports here and what's with them are World War II bunkers and I love anything like that and I thought well let's stop at one and have a look and this is one that I haven't gone much further than this all I can see is a lot of what looks like debris and overgrown kind of bits and uh yeah, I'm intrigued as to what's here. Check it out. So this, it looks so insane. I love it. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get into it. It's a good thing I'm not scared of spiders. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is awesome. <laughs> And when I was Googling as well, I just checked it out a little bit more. That airfield is where the STARS parachute team train. So yeah, it it is in use from what I understand. But obviously this is uh, no longer in use. And yeah, what a strange place to come see. Okay, so maybe I should have thought a bit more about coming in this with my gear on. <laughs> for you <laughs> and this is what I love about the Cotswold right so not only do you have these quaint and quirky little villages and they're just full of these beautiful houses and stone built properties little old churches fun little towers it's just just beautiful places at the end of the day but in between all these villages you then have these wonderful country lanes and you can see with the rolling meadows either side I just really really enjoy it it's just therapeutic you know coming up here and seeing all of this The Africa Twin is awesome, I love riding it. My bum's so comfy, it rides like it's on rails. Mm. 
As you know, I like to buy the best ingredients and the freshest ingredients that I can find. And what's better than actually Googling the best, freshest farm shop ever in Cotswold on Google and going to it. And we have today the farm shop at Hawkesbury. This is where we are. And I'm gonna meet the owners and pick out some amazing produce and food from their wonderful farm. So this is Karen and Hannah. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. <laughs> All nice COVID you. prepped. <laughs> so I'm inside and I cannot express how excited I am. This place is amazing. They have so many great stuff, not just from their farm. They also source a load of stuff locally as well. But I mean, this, for example, is some of the stuff. Look at this. Amazing. Goose eggs, scotch eggs. I already know that cameraman Tom and producer is already eyeing up the lovely, lovely steak here. So we'll probably go down that route for that. So many sausages. If you want sausages, this is the place to come. I think I'm gonna probably look at doing maybe a sausage casserole for myself and maybe take some faggots for tomorrow lunchtime as well. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. So this is the wonderful, wonderful things that I've decided by, as you know. How could you resist? For a nice stew, black pudding sausages. I'm gonna have black pudding sausage stew. We've been invited to the back side of the farm where we get to see some lambs and pigs and piglets. So I'm very excited about this. And again, this is part of all the adventure. You meet lovely people like this and they're like happy to show you around and show you what you're doing. It's fantastic. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Hey, hey, having a good old sip. And you, you're pretty too. I think cows are like big dogs, aren't you? Well, oh, you like a good old scritch normally. Is that nice? Is that nice? Oh, I know. Oh, talking of puppies. Hello. Hello, Quinn. Oh, aren't you lovely? So this lovely coo is ready, ready to birth. Yeah, she's uh, one of your favourites, really. She's so friendly. Yeah. Does she have a name? Ruby. Ruby! I know, soft, I know. Ruby, but hey girl. She is lovely. Are you ready to be a mummy? And that's Hawkesbury Farm. So you can see how amazing and free range everything is here. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. I'm very excited about cooking food. And anyone in this area, I come here. Come here, everyone's lovely. The food is fantastic. The animals are well looked after. And yeah, let's go cooking though. Oh my goodness! Hey! Hold him nice and tight and then he, uh, he won't get nervous. <laughs> oh! Oh, I want to take him home. Now, do I think I have picked the right bike? Well, yes. There's just no other way of saying it. I love the Africa Twin and having ridden its predecessor back in oh, 2013 when I was in Namibia, they've come on leaps and bounds. This is just such a marvelous machine. It's comfortable, it handles incredibly well. I just thoroughly enjoy riding it. After a long day of riding, we have arrived at our location to sleep and it's a boat. Unbelievable believe sleeping on a boat. What's worse, I think Tom gets a bit seasick. So this will be interesting because it's a bit rocky tonight. <laughs> but we can't give you a proper tour because as you can see, it's already dark and it's beautiful here as well. So in the morning, I promise you, I'll give you a full tour and a full show of it. And right now, let's get to cooking because I am Hank Marvin. I am having a lovely sausage stew. And that's just really simple again, some really simple ingredients, browning off some nice onions, cooking with some carrots, some nice potatoes as well, and some garlic as well. Uh, tomatoes, really, really simple stuff. Uh, just tasty and wholesome food. I nick some of Tom's Stilton sauce as well, put on this, but this is lush. It's hot, it's warm. Mm. And that back pudding, sausage is just well you can see it's all broken up but my god the flavor in it is amazing happy happy claire 
After a awesome day of riding and some amazing food, I am stuffed. I'm all ready for bed and all tucked up. Heated, heated blanket. I'm going to bed. Night guys. on the River Avon on a stupendous boat. I have slept incredibly well and I'm very, very excited to get up and show you around the awesome, awesome site that I'm on. So yeah, let me go get dressed and let's go see. So this is the outdoor living space that we've had for the evening. As you can see, the cooking area, which I did all the yummy food on, nice good old fridge come here though I want to show you the bathroom which is actually kind of cool it's always a luxury to have bathrooms and stuff like this but look at this your lovely Thetford toilet you got a screen there hot shower boom and yeah got nice little bits over here as well soaps and towels and all sorts it's amazing it's been absolutely awesome here but I want to show you now the inside of the boat because it's Wicked! This is great! <laughs> it's actually quite wobbly when you get in, but incredibly fun at the same time. And yeah, it's dirty, but it's lush. You've got a lovely single bed here, fluffy cushions, and all the heating in the world that you could dream of. Then, this is where I was sleeping. Come, 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 come see. Awesome place to stay for a 24 hour adventure. What's cool, also included, are bicycle hire, kayaks, and robos. Don't feel afraid to go on little adventures on boats and bicycles when you're on your motorbike because at the end of the day, it's fun and you're not really cheating on your bike, it's just part of the adventure. And this place is gorgeous, you should see it in the summer. So before I get dressed and hop on the bike, I thought I'd say why have I picked the Africa Twin? And it's really simple. It's a nice low bike, it's super easy handling, and just a great all-round adventure bike. Now there are a few little things that would have been nice to have, like for example, the grab handles like yanking it around, some protection here, a bit more would be nice, and maybe a taller fairing, which to be honest, is all on the Africa Twin Adventure Sport, which we have, but for a 24 hour adventure, I just didn't need it. I thought, I'll pick this. So yeah, let's go get riding and fingers crossed the weather stays nice. <laughs> oh my God, I did it. Now, as for the Cotswolds, you can see that some of the places I've been are just stunning. It's quaint and quirky with the old cottages and churches and beautiful, beautiful stone buildings and just a huge amount of post boxes and telephone booths and everything that's British, pubs and farms. And I just love that. I thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, look what I'm coming up to now. I have no idea what this place is, but it's absolutely stunning. It's really, really beautiful. Right, so I am at the beginning of a wonderful byway and we're about to head off down it and have a bit of a bimble. Um, it starts off roughly around where the Cotswolds Airport is, so very close to where we were yesterday, and it heads all the way down to the M4. Dead straight line, amazing. Um, now, this is looking pretty compact and easy, which is good because the tyres that we've got on at the moment aren't the best. They're what the bike comes with and a bit kind of roady. In an ideal world, 
I'd have slapped on some Dunlops D606s. They would have been amazing. But I'm pretty sure it'll be able to handle this. And yeah, it's going to be nice to go have a bimble. Let's go. So as you can see, this is just a nice, hard, compact byway. There's a few dips and gullies. It's very, very easy. So anyone who's kind of starting off riding and wanting to try their hand at doing a little bit of off-road in Green Lane, this is just such a nice, simple starting point at the end of the day. Enjoy your walk. <laughs> that was a lovely little bimble down the byway. It's really simple. It's a really nice, easy one for anyone to start off on. So if you're a bit nervous, this is ideal to go on. And you saw there was loads of different people on there. So make sure when you are coming along things like this, you're just nice and friendly and chatty. Like, did you see the horse? Oh my God, she was lovely. And she ended up galloping up after me and we chatted and stuff. It was great fun. And the puppies as well and the cyclists. It was just wicked. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Now I'm going to go to a special little village just to finish off my 24 hour adventure. And I'm very excited about it. And so this is the end of our little journey. We've decided to finish here in the wonderful, wonderful Castle Coombe village, which is just on the border of Wiltshire and the Cotswolds. Now, what makes this slightly different from all the rest of the beautiful, picturesque and soft stone villages we've been riding through is that it has the fantastic, fantastic Castle Coombe racetrack. And sadly, we're not actually able to go on it because of COVID. So maybe next time, but hopefully we've inspired you to go on some great adventures around the wonderful, wonderful Cotswolds. And this is why I love the Cotswolds. They've got awesome things like this lying around. Cakes, homemade cakes. This is just like my food haven here. And they just leave it out for you to put money and just take. Oh, totally, totally gonna grab me some cake. Why are you pulling a weird face? I have to say that food looked lush. Oh, it was just gorgeous. And the whole weekend was amazing, you know, on the boat, just doing so much. And, and it shows how much fun you can have in just 24 hours. I also think the variety you can have also is something really special. Saying that, your rowing is a bit like a sloppy f***ing mermaid. Oh, right. <laughs> That's just very, very harsh, isn't it? And uh, on that note, it's time to end the show. Next time out, Sam gets to ride the KTM 890. But until then, ride safe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>